Don't do it! I will hurt you! No! Look at this dude! <laughs> no, 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 no! <laughs> Stop right there, criminal scum! Muchas gracias, afición. Este es para vosotros. ¡Sí! Nice job, team. Hey, what is going on guys? My name is Bob Loon, aka Pab Loon, and today we are back with another episode of Cruises of Blitz. And that today we are taking a look at the San Martin, the tier 10 Pan American cruiser that was released a couple months ago. This is episode 22, and uh, we are really getting close to finishing all the Tech Tree cruisers here. I believe the only one I'm missing is Marseille. So why don't we just jump right into this and how I build my San Martin. I hope you enjoyed the montage and... Uh, I, I think you're going to enjoy the gameplays as well, because this ship is high intensity, high octane, fast paced. It's a really fun ship. For the elite bonus, we are taking main battery range. Um, you could go for better reload time, but honestly, I feel like the range is a really nice bonus here. So I went with this. The camo is the best camo we can get. It's the, the historical one right here. It's the completely blacked out 
kind of gray. It looks really sick. I love this camo. And the reason it's better than the Inca um, Aztec camo is because this one gives you surface detection. If we just quickly take a look at the other camos, I have not purchased them simply because they aren't better, um, at least the tier 10 version. This one gives main battery traverse speed and better shell characteristics, which is also good, but you really, really do want surface detection on this ship because we are going into a full concealment build. So you can see here, this thing does not give you shell characteristics. You retain the range buff, which is nice, but you also get torpedo range and you retain max traverse speed. But instead of shell dispersion, you get surface detection. And I think that is a very, very well worth trade. For the details, I almost forgot about this. Since if you, if you don't know what San Martin does or the Pan American Cruisers, the TLDR is you have this combat instructions, observe fire, where if you get 50 shell hits, you redu reduce your reload time and your dispersion by 30% and you increase your AP shell penetration by 30%. This is an insane skill and it's almost like a combination of all the offensive gun skills we have combined into one. You get the second best AA in the game with DFA3 because this thing is pretty much a Worcester, um, but with different main guns. So you have really good AA, and if you saw in some of my clips, some of them I had 26 playing kills, some of them I had 38 playing kills. Yeah, it, it, CVs won't bother you in this thing, and if they do, they'll regret, regret it. You also get Radar 2, and uh, that is a really, really strong package, but we're not done yet. This thing gets an emergency repair. These are the same heals that Goliath have, so they give you a little bit more, 20% extra. So yeah, this is uh, a strong package. The reload on these guns, these 152s, are is 5 seconds, and um, that is a really good reload overall. It's very easy to get these 50 hits, and it's one, it's the playstyle of this ship that requires you to really hit targets all the time. If you're not shooting with San Martin, you're really missing out on a lot of damage. You also get torpedoes, two on each, uh, sorry, 5 on each side, and uh, they go, you know, 8.7, pretty, pretty good, not bad at all. They are very useful and helpful, especially if you're, you know, going to be fighting a BB. If you have your combat instructions, you can also use your torpedoes and completely melt the battleship. It's it's very, very fun. For my build, these are my supplies. This is my equipment. We are going to take dispersion. This, to me, is a no-brainer because you want to be hitting all your shells. Remember, we have to hit 50 to activate combat instructions. So... Having dispersion really is nice, especially also for DDs, because this thing annihilates destroyers. It's so easy to kill them with this. We take propulsion, and then we take concealment. For my commander, I am running this Almirante Cabral here, and um, since we don't have sonar, I went into this. I did not take an extra DFA, but I went into the anti-torpedo protection. We take artillery maintenance, air defense expert, very, very important. And then we're going to take both the healing skills, because remember, we have an OP heal. Or not OP, it's not a St. Vincent heal, but it's definitely a buffed one. So we're going to buff him even more. I take Generalist, because we can't set fires with this thing, guys. It is an AP-only ship. I think I should, I'm, I should probably have mentioned that before, but this thing does not have HE. So taking Exploit Weakness is really not ideal, since you won't be setting that many floods. And we don't have a Sonar, so we take Generalist. Adrenaline Rush is uber important. This is going to make your damage or your DPM even better. Demolition Expert, Honor Seeker, and then we take Armor Piercing Cap Shell, of course, because we don't have HE. So don't, don't take this, guys. And for the final one, I am kind of torn between Giant Hunter and Citadel Strike. I think I'll take Citadel Strike because you can get a bunch of Citadels with the, the skill when you activate it, especially on Minotaurs, Smolensk, and such. So, that is it for my build, and I'm going to take you guys into the two games I have lined up here for you. Alright, so for game one, we are going to be playing here on Encounter, and uh, it's a non-CV game. This is a game I literally just played, so it's pretty fresh off of my mind. And it's a high damage game, but San Martin here is... It's a really good cruiser, and I don't think a lot of people have realized yet. I know that Matt and Red and a lot of the cruiser aficionados out there have found out how powerful this ship is but i'm here to tell you guys that you should grind san martin now the reason being san martin is one of the few ships in this game that can carry and win a game all by themselves 
that is pretty freaking hard in this game because you rely a lot on your team. But with this combat instructions, with AA and with a radar, you can actually do quite a bit of work just by yourself. It's just like Jinan in the sense that this thing is able to, you know, in, in one minute or two minutes, turn the game around. Jinan can send a ton of torpedoes out and, you know, sick a very important target or damage to very important targets and the team can follow up. Well, San Martin here, when it opens up its guns and uses combat instructions, it is such a big threat to any ship that it faces that everybody will be turning for this. So you also have to be extremely aware of how many targets you're engaging at the same time and who you're really showing broadside to. Because showing broadside in this ship is not a good idea. It is the same hull as Worcester and it feels pretty much the same. You kind of have this troll armor if you've played Worcester. Sometimes you can take a full broadside salvo and like take 2000 damage. It's the same here, but you don't count on it guys. Do not count on your, you being lucky because it, you could get a one shot. So how do you play this? Well, you see me here in the beginning. I'm scouting for targets. I don't want to be too far up, but I noticed that my teammates here in front of me are pushing up quite a bit, so I want to actually help them. My Schlieffen is behind me here is pulling back and uh, retreating out, so we are in dire need of some help here. But fear not, San Martin is coming. So we start with focusing this Minotaur here, but Thunderer shows up. And you can see me immediately immediately turning my ship because I don't want to take an unnecessary huge salvo from that guy. There is also a Shimakaze out there somewhere, and at this point in time in the game, I wasn't really looking at the range of Minotaur. I, I couldn't remember if he was in torpedo range, but this is something you have to think about all the time. How many targets are able to punish me right now, and it, can I turn out and, you know, make maneuvers? And we can at this point because Thunder has left and is behind the island. So you see me now pushing out, and we activate the competent structures, and here we go. This Minotaur is in dire straits. He has to get the heck out of dodge if he wants to survive, but unfortunately his smoke is not close to him and he's not going to survive this one. And you saw right here, this is where we made our push. As soon as that Thunderer was gone, I pushed out, I activated my combat instructions because it was ready, and we were able to take out Minotaur pretty easily. I am not afraid to fight this Napoli here because, again, we're just going to turn away, we're just going to angle our ship and make it as hard as him or, or as hard for him as, to, as possible to actually use his secondary suite. We're just going to sail away, and now he's out of range. My torpedoes are coming along to his broadside, and he's not going to be surviving for much longer. If there's something you've noticed about this game already, is that I have been shooting constantly the whole time. And we're now up to our second combat instructions. Well, we need one hit. I think we're at, the, we need, we're at 49 hits, probably, and we just need one. So I'm going to start... You know, shooting this Thunderer. He's pushing out, he's actually coming to face us now, and I'm gonna use my heal immediately, guys. Think about your heals as your, you know, get out of jail free card. They actually heal you quite a bit. So remember to use them early and fast. Um, you don't want to be sitting in a, you know, a situation where you've only used one heal, but you're really, really low. You want to use them as soon as you see, okay, I'm, I'm about a fourth of my HP down, I lost 25%, I'm going to heal now. Because then there's a higher likelihood that you have your heal in a fight, for example, against a Thunderer like this. Now, unfortunately, I, I don't have a heal right now, I used it already. And there's 55 seconds till it's over, so we have to really start angling now. And this is not the time to show broadside, so we immediately turn our ship away from the Thunderer and make ourselves a hard target. The Shimakaze is not in range of torpedoes, so I feel pretty safe just, you know, scooting about here, sitting kind of broadside to him. All my focus is on Thunderer and his eventual salvo coming for me. Now he's also bowing, so we are only facing four guns, and uh, that's going to be a great, you know, save to us here, because we only take one shell. Now we have farmed up enough hits to get our combat instructions again, and we see Thunderer opening up to his, you know, his broadside to get all guns to bear. I don't want to do that just yet, but now that he shot his rear turrets, I feel more confident that I can actually take him out, because look, 6 seconds and my heal is going to come up. So I'm betting on the fact that I will survive this salvo, we barely do, instantly heal and now we just hurl away these shells at Thunderer. You want to try to aim at the stern or the bow, but if you aren't able to do that, the extra pen you get on the combat instructions is fine if you just hit superstructure. 
But the ideal place to hit is, you know, right in front of the turrets on the bow. And, you know, try to try to aim at the weak points of ships because you don't want to waste your combat instructions. Without HE, you have to be extremely precise and that's what makes this ship a little bit, you know, hard to play. But I have to say this right now, compared to Worcester or Minotaur, this thing feels pretty pretty solid to me. I mean, you're not as squishy as a Minotaur, and Worcester, you don't have those orbital shells that take forever to hit. Fighting a destroyer at long range is a breeze with this thing. But now we see that the enemy team is kind of, you know, conjoined up in the middle there, so I'm gonna make sure that this Vermont can't see me. I'm just gonna stay behind this island. Sure, we're spotted, but this man could be healing, and I'm not too sure he's gonna, you know, die instantly. So I'm just gonna wait, not push far, too far forward. I don't want him to see me, and I'm just gonna, you know, as soon as he comes out and can spot me, I'm just gonna turn in, bow in, and make it really hard for him. He doesn't know how fast I'm going, so I'm gonna go, you know, full ahead speed and just try to scoot under his shells. But luckily, my Vermont finishes him off. GG Jory. Uh, old, old fleet member who um, who is also a good Lu enjoyer. Th there's not many of them, so I remember his name. <laughs> but that's pretty much going to be it for this game, and we finished off the rest of the team. There's 20 seconds left, and my teammate says, defend our base. I decide not to shoot at this Mecklenburg, because we are very low. One good salvo from him could finish me off, and I think it would be a draw by then, but... He barely kills us, 400 HP, that was a very risky play, and I can send off a couple shells here just to get some extra damage. And that is the game. So you saw we were extremely aggressive throughout the whole game, but we also were kind of conservative of how far we pushed out. My Minotaur pushed way too far, and the DD we had up there, they both died, but we managed to use their, you know, the enemy shooting them to our advantage and farm away on the enemy ships. 338 shell hits, 3 kills, not bad. Ow. I know I told you guys that this is one of the few ships that can carry a game. This is going to be an example of why that is still very, very unlikely you will carry the game. Because this is not going to be a win. We're going to be fighting for our lives here in this one. And really trying to, you know, hold it together. But it is a team game, guys. Remember that you're not a solo player. You're not the, the main star, the main character of the show. There's seven of us on each team, and we have to work together to win this. But nonetheless, this is a good gameplay, and it shows, you know, one of the most powerful things a cruiser can do, and that's island usage. Usage, sorry. Why are islands very important? Well, they give you the opportunity to stay in cover, right? Sure, not from a CV, but what we're going to use it for in this circumstance is singling out targets, making sure that we're not, you know, being shot at by multiple ships. And if there is a ship we're shooting at, we're going to single him out and isolate him, making sure that we are we can only see him and the enemy can only see him. So that means they can't see us. They could just see their teammate getting wrecked. But we get some planes coming in here and, well, they are on the return path. But you can see both me and the Santander here, we just, well, we shred his planes. I didn't even use my DFA and uh, there was no need to. So I'm just going to park myself right here, and this is a great spot for any cruiser for that matter. Just make sure you're not too overextended. Sometimes you can get a little bit greedy and push, you know, a little further in, and that's going to be very, very dangerous for you. Just look at my Kearsarge here to the right, who is, uh, well, Beta here is barreling in towards the enemy, and we have no freaking clue what his, what his mission is. But you can see what kind of teammates we have here, and it, it, that's what's going to make this super difficult. But we're still going to stay here. Notice what I talked about with the islands, using them as kind of like cover. So if there is a DD on my left, well, he sure as hell can't hit me because there's an island. And the, currently, the only targets that could hit me are the ones in front of me. But I'm a really unattractive target since I'm completely bow in. The, one of the reasons why staying bow in is so good is because it presents the enemy with a really bad target. It's not very easy to hit someone who's bow in. But, um... We can't stay there too long, because now the CV, the Minnesota, and there's a Shimakaze coming towards us. That's why we sat at the island. If I had sat a little bit further out, I could have eaten a full salvo from a Shimakaze. That wouldn't, wouldn't have been fun. So now we're just gonna reverse out here. We've already lost three ships, we've only taken out one of theirs, and that's a bot. So, currently I'm thinking to myself, hmm, what are we gonna do in this situation? But I see the Minnesota and the Shimakaze are going to commit to this side here. So me and Santander, by the way, great job by him for helping out here. 
Sunset there is obviously the tier 9 of this, so it's it's quite similar to this thing. And I will say one thing, it's Santander is a great tier 9. It's a really enjoyable grind. And you can definitely feel the power of the combat instructions once you get to that tier. But here we see him, Minnesota pushing up. I'm going to use my torpedoes and try to focus this guy. We have both me and Santander to take him out. So I'm going to use my combat instructions and try to hit his bow. You can see how chunky these salvos are. That's 5k. Let's see how much we do again. That's 3k. I mean, you, you see the damage that we are inflicting on this guy. It's not very hard to do. And with the dispersion and the shell characteristics of this ship, it's very nice and very smooth. These guns are easy to hit with. And you can see how well how easy we, easily we disperse of a, a massive battleship like Minnesota. So here you see the AA again. We, we don't we barely have to worry about any CV player with this ship, and that's one of the reasons why this is such a good ship. I'm gonna say right now, this is an S-tier cruiser, and in my opinion, it is it is better than many other cruisers that people have before this said was S. Let's take Minnow for example. It is still an S-tier cruiser in my opinion, but if you if you say what, what would I rather have, a Minotaur or a San Martin? I would much rather have a San Martin. He brings radar, he brings DD annihilation capabilities, and he has survivability. Minotaur, if you're a good player and you see a Minnow smoke up and you know he's broadside, well, it's not very hard to kill him. This thing, the player is going to be moving around, he's going to be kiting, he's going to be shooting all the time, and if he gets 50 hits, well, you better believe you're done. And here we see Sejong coming in, we get the double strike, the <laughs> Shimakasi shows up, and now everything is just becoming a rapture, bro. It's the Armageddon, Neptune's pushing up, and me and this Santander, man, we're having a little bit of a rough time. Unfortunately, I, I didn't get my torpedoes off. That's not his fault. I, I could have just waited. But I'm going to try to take out this Neptune as fast as I can. Luckily, my teammate gets him. And now our next target is Vermont. So we're just going to turn in immediately. One salvo from this guy could, could kill us. So again, guys, bow in, sacrifice those rear guns and your, some of your DPM. It is worth it because you can still farm up your hits just with your front turrets. And that's what we're doing right now. I'm just using the front turrets to make sure I get my 50 hits. Because with this combat instructions, I might actually have a chance against this Vermont. But here we see we are in quite the pickle. We have to choose to dodge torpedoes or dodge a Vermont salvo. And, well, this one's not going to be easy. It definitely is not. So we're just barreling down this guy and we're barely healing. We just popped our heal. 19, 2700, 3400. Look at the healing, guys. Somehow we're alive. I don't know how, but we are. And we're just going to keep going forward towards this guy, hoping that we might be able to get some torpedoes off here in the end. But this is... This is looking close, guys. Look at our damage ticking up. He still has not killed us. 2,000 HP, and there we go. He finishes us off with his AP. But just notice how much damage we were able to do, me and this Santander, together. 140,000 damage. And it was all within the span of like two minutes. 25 playing kills. The Santander goes down, and I want to say GG to Hachan EJ. Sorry if I but butchered your name, bro, but you, you and I tried. We definitely gave it a shot, but look at our team. They're all dead. So that's going to be it for this gameplay. I won't bore you guys with the CV on CV action. I don't even think me and myself back in when I played this game cared for it. I think I'm just going to, yep, return support. <laughs> so yeah. Well, here we are. This is going to be the end of the video. And I just want to thank you guys for watching along and being patient with this one. It uh, took a little bit of time to make, but I had a ton of fun playing this ship and a ton of fun editing the video. If you guys are planning on playing the San Martino, getting it, I really hope this video helped because I can say right now, this is one of the best cruisers in the game currently. Definitely S tier, definitely a ship that has a high skill ceiling. And that's, my, in my opinion, what makes a good tech tree ship. If there is room for improvement and you have room to master this there's a lot of you know progression and skill it's a good ship and it really really rewards the good thinking player and the fast thinking player and the one who is brave if you're brave and have a huge sack of cojones well trust me you will have fun in this ship that's going to be it for this video i hope you guys enjoyed my name has been bubbly aka pabloon and i'll see you guys in the next cruises of blitz episode where we'll take a look at the Mar